this is the basics of structural engineering. What's up guys? This is Engineer Jack. So before we design structures, may mga subjects na kailangan natin aralin sa structural engineering. Number one is mathematics. Ito talaga ang pundasyon ng engineering and sciences. It all started sa algebra, trigonometry, plane and solid mensuration, analytic geometry, differential and integral calculus na gamit na gamit natin especially pag non-prismatic members yung structural components or hindi uniform ang cross-sectional area ng structures natin. Number two is statics of rigid bodies. Uh, kung saan we solve forces, resultants, and moments in 2D and 3D structures. Dito din natin pag-usapan ng centroids or center of gravity. Moment of inertia ng ibig sabihin simply the second moment of an area. Number 3 is strength of materials. Dito sa strength of materials, dito natin pag-usapan ng stresses and strain. So the difference between them, ang stress is associated with the strength of the material from which the body is made. While strain is the measure of the deformation of the body. So example ng stress is simple stresses like normal stress and average shear stress. Uh, thermal stress, torsional stress, bending stress or flexural stress, horizontal or transverse shear stress, or combination of all of them which is combined stresses. So kung tayo ang magdi-design ng structures, uh, it should have the ability to resist deformation or yung structure natin dapat stiff kasi yun naman talaga ang trabaho natin as civil engineers. Number four is structural analysis. Dito natin malalaman ang determinacy ng structures natin. So, determine ang structure if the number of reactions is equal to the number of equations. Kung nag-exceed ang number of reactions mo sa number of equations, then that is definitely indeterminate structure. Ang tanong, paano kung baliktad? Paano kung ang reactions mo is less than the number of equations. So, kung ganun ang mangyari, ang structure natin is not stable or tinatawag natin na unstable. Ang tanong, ano nga bang pinagsasabi kong number of equations? Yun yung summation of forces and summation of moments na in-equate natin sa zero for equilibrium. So, kung kulang ang number of equations natin in solving the reactions of our indeterminate structures, kailangan na natin ng panibagong equation. And dito na papasok ang deflections. Marami tayong methods in solving deflections. I think there are 5 or 6 methods in solving deflections and we can also use the 3 moment equation. Examples of methods of solving deflections, we can use the double integration method, area moment method, virtual work, and marami pang iba. So, pag-uusapan din natin dito sa structural analysis ang classification of structures like trusses, cables and arcs, and frames. Classification of supports like pin, rollers, and fixed supports, types of structural elements like beams, slab, columns, and footings, loads like dead loads and live loads na tawag sa kanila gravity loads, environmental loads like rain load and snow load. Siyempre sa Pilipinas, rain lang, walang snow. Lateral loads like wind and earthquake loads. Number five is structural dynamics where we design our structures to resist lateral loads such as wind and earthquake. Uh, this is very important sa design kasi especially when we are designing high-rise structures. Today, we use five types sa design in resisting this type of loads. Number one is moment resisting frames na pinapalaki natin ang structural members at dinadagdagan natin ang steel reinforcement sa reinforced concrete design. Number two is bracing system. Yan yung may mga cross bracing tiles sa walls. Number three is shear wall. Ang shear wall is not masonry guys ha. Is structural wall siya with reinforcement and buhos. And ang shear wall ay nag-start from the foundation. Number four is dumping system where we use dumpers Example nyan is Taipei 101. And number 5 is isolation system. Nang structural components natin ay pwede natin i-isolate. Yung parang hindi rigid ang connections nila. Mga ganun. Then right after maaral natin lahat yun, mathematics, statics of rigid bodies, strength of materials, and structural analysis, we are ready to add the properties of materials na common na ginagamit natin or available sa atin sa Pilipinas which is concrete, steel, and wood. Sa structural design, we are studying the behavior of this material. 
size. In this side, we're not just talking about the strength and serviceability ng structures. Pag-uusapan din natin dito kung ano sa mga materials natin ang most economical depending on what kind of structure we are designing. So we have reinforced concrete design, combination of concrete and steel, steel design for steel structures, timber design for wood, foundation design with the applications of geotechnical engineering, and composite structures or combination of two or more materials. And syempre, in design, meron din tayong Biblia or basihan sa pag-design. We have standards then, provisions, specifications, requirements, codes. Dito sa Pilipinas, we have the National Structural Code of the Philippines. And this is used to establish the requirements for the actual structural design. And take note, the code provide only a general guide for design. And remember, the ultimate responsibility for the design lies with the structural engineer. So that's it. That's the basics of structural engineering. And thank you for watching.